Imagine standing in front of a boardroom packed with executives. You're the presenter and you go to pull up the files on your computer and you realize everything has been corrupted. Can you imagine the sense of dread? There's a name for this physiological response to prolonged stress humans endure. That same physiological response humans have had since the dawn of time is just as prevalent, if not more so, today. It's called General Adaptation Syndrome and was first described by Dr. Hans Selye in 1950. General Adaptation Syndrome has three stages that act as a guide to assist healthcare professionals with their evaluation and early intervention strategies. The first stage in the process is alarm, where the body reacts with a fight-or-flight response when the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated by a threat or danger. It's what you would feel in that boardroom, a lump in your throat or a pit in your stomach, even bodily reactions like your cheeks flushing and sweat beating on your forehead. In the second stage, resistance, the body resists and compensates as the parasympathetic nervous system attempts to return many physiological functions to normal levels while the body still remains on alert. Imagine yourself back in the boardroom, getting ready to present to the group again. In the approaching days of the presentation, you have trouble sleeping and your energy levels change dramatically throughout the day. The third and final stage is exhaustion. In this stage, stressors continue beyond the body's capacity and the body's resources simply can't fight anymore. It is at this stage where a person becomes more susceptible to disease and death. Although clinically defined in stages, Dr. Selye also cautioned that general adaptation syndrome rarely occurs in a pure form. It's complicated by underlying actions of the stressors, so is really better defined as a spectrum. This spectrum and our central system response to it is referred to as the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal or HPA axis. It is within the HPA axis that a complex set of feedback interactions takes place and forms a major part of the neuroendocrine system that controls the stress response. The major players in the system are the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and adrenal cortex. They play upon each other in a domino type effect. This response is characterized by hypothalamic release of the corticotropin releasing factor or CRF. When CRF binds to CRF receptors on the anterior pituitary gland, adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH, is released. ACTH binds to receptors on the adrenal cortex and stimulates the release of cortisol. In response to stress, cortisol will be released for several hours after encountering the stressor. Once the bloodstream obtains a certain concentration of cortisol, protection is achieved. Cortisol then sends that feedback to its other members of the stressor attack team, and systemic homeostasis begins to return. With repeated and sustained stressors, and therefore HPA axis activity, the body can not only become more sensitive to new stressors, but can also weaken. That's why it's important to maintain equilibrium of the HPA axis and help the body maintain a healthy stress response. Because stress is a common part of everyday life, Restoring homeostasis to the HPA axis is a primary goal of integrative care. To learn how to optimize the HPA axis, download our HPA axis optimization program. For more insight on the complexities of the HPA axis and the effects of and responses to stress, visit the Stress Response Resource Center or integrativepro.com.